Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's find the area between the circle and the cardioid defined by the two functions R1 and R2. And we're looking for the area that's inside both curves. So we're talking about the area right in here. And notice again, we need to find the points of intersection. So we set the two curves equal to another, R1 equal to R2. 3 cosine theta equals 1 plus the cosine of theta. We find that cosine of theta equals 1 half, so the angle again is 60 degrees or pi over 3. Also, we must be careful when we try to find the area. Notice when we find the area from here to this line right here that goes right to the point of intersection, we still have a small area not accounted for, and the limits there have to be different because notice the small area element is, def is confined by the curve R1, where the small area element over here, dA, is defined by the curve R2. So we do have to have two separate integrals that we're going to add together. So starting with the first one, let's find A1. Also using the symmetry, we're only going to find the top half and then double it to get the bottom half of the area there as well. So A1 is going to be equal to 1 half using the general equation right here times the integral from 0 to pi over 3 of, in this case, A1 here is defined by the curve R2, so it'll be r2 squared times d theta and since we're going to only take the limits from 0 to pi over 3 for the top half we have to multiply times 2 to get the total area so that means that a1 is equal to the integral from 0 to pi divided by 3 r2 squared that's that quantity squared that's 1 plus the cosine of theta squared d theta which means that this is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 3 of 1 plus 2 cosine theta plus the cosine square of theta times d theta. Because we have this cosine square of theta here, we're going to have to separate that again in two separate integrals. So this is going to look as follows. This is equal to from 0 to pi over 3 of 1 plus 2 times the cosine of theta plus this can be written as 1 half times 1 plus the cosine of 2 theta like that times d theta so now we can combine this term and this term 1 plus 1 half is 3 halves so this is equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 3 of 3 over 2 plus 2 times the cosine of theta, the whole thing times d theta, that's easily integrated. And then over here, we have the integral plus the integral. We have a 1 half in front, and maybe I'm going to need a little bit more room. You'll see in just a moment why that is so. So let me leave a little bit more room. Integral of the cosine of 2 theta times d theta. Now notice we need a proper differential there, so we need a 2d theta. So I multiply times 2 and also have to divide by 2. That's why I needed the room there. And I think now we're ready to go ahead and integrate that. The integral limits are from 0 to pi over 3. Okay, integrating this, we get the following. We get 3 over 2 times theta plus 2 times the sine of theta. Everything evaluated. Well, I can probably do the whole thing together, right? So plus 1 quarter times the sine of 2. 2 theta and everything is evaluated from 0 to pi over 3 so I combine the two integrals and now when I plug in the limits we get the following so in the upper limit we get uh, pi over 3 times 3 over 2 so that's the same as pi over 2 plus 2 times the sine of pi over 3 now the sine of pi over 3 that's the square root of 3 over 2 so that's 2 times the square root of 3 over 2 so the 2's cancel out and then finally when plugging the upper limit here the sine of 2 times the pi over 3 that's 2 pi over 3 that's also the square root of 3 over 2 so that would be plus 1 quarter the square root of 3 over 2 so simplifying this a little bit more that gives us pi divided by 2 plus the square root of 3 plus 1 8 the square root of 3 so really what we could do is write this as pi over 2 plus 9 over 8 times the square root of 3 so this is equal to the area as we called a1 which would be the top and the bottom half 
of the area from here to here, but we haven't yet accounted for the two areas over here, A2. So let's go ahead and find A2 now. So A2 is equal to, again, we use the general equation, the integral of 1 half times R. Now in this case, that's defined by the curve here, which is, uh, that's R1. So we have the curve R1 squared times d theta. But since we want both of them, we have to also multiply times 2 because we want the top and the bottom portion of A2. So the 2 counts out to 1 half. So we have A2 is equal to the integral of R1 squared. R1 is right here. So we square that. So we end up with 9 times the cosine square of theta d theta. And again, we end up with a cosine square, so we have to use the identity for that, bring the 9 out, so it becomes equal to 9 times the integral of 1 half times 1 plus the cosine of 2 theta times d theta. What are the limits of integration here? The limits of integration are going to be from pi over 3 to pi over 2. So we might as well put those in there as well, from pi over 3 to pi over 2, pi over 3 to pi over 2, pi over 3 to pi over 2. So here, notice we, again we're going to need two integrals, so this becomes equal to 9 over 2 times the integral of d theta from pi thirds to pi halves, and then plus 9 over 2 times the integral of the cosine of 2 theta times d theta. Again, we need the 2 there and divide by 2 as well. So we compensate for that. Now we can integrate that. And so this becomes 9 over 2 times theta from pi thirds to pi halves plus 9 over 4 times the sine of 2 theta evaluated from pi thirds to pi halves. So let's go ahead and evaluate that and see what we get. Here we end up with upper limit that would be 9 over 4 pi minus, but in the lower limit that would be 9 over 6 pi. Here when you plug in the upper limit we get nothing because the sine of pi is 0, minus the lower limit 9 over 4 times the sine of 2 times pi over 3, that would be the square root of 3 over 2. When you combine those, the common denominator is 12, that's 27 over 12 minus 18 over 12, that would be 9 over 12, so this is equal to 9 over 12 pi minus 9 eighths times the square root of 3. And so this here now becomes a2, uh, yeah, a2, and here we have a1. Now all we have to do is combine those two to get the total area. So the total area A is A1 plus A2, so that's equal to, over here we have the square, the pi over 2, plus 9 eighths square root of 3, over here we have plus 9 over 12 pi, and here we have minus 9 over 8 times the square root of 3. And notice, luckily, these two cancel out. All we have left to do is combine those two. Common denominator would be a 12, so this gives us 6 over 12 plus 9 over 12 times pi, and that's 15 over 12, which is the same as 5 over 4 times pi. I know I'm running out of room here, but that would then be the final combined area of A1 plus A2 for both the top and the bottom halves, because we compensated for it. In each case, multiply both uh, by 2. And so that's then the total area enclosed by both curves at the same time, 5 over 4 pi. It's actually kind of a small answer, simple answer for kind of a complicated problem. And that's how it's done.